Welcome to the Weekly Bat. Welcome to the Weekly Bat for the week of April 18th to April 24th, 2020. Starting off this week with a post on the official Brave blog by Jonathan Sampson, Senior Developer Relations at Brave. What happens when you run a new browser on your iPad or iPhone for the first time? What does it do, and with whom does it communicate prior to user navigation? John Sampson explores these questions here. Browser First Run, iOS Edition Last year, I did a review of several popular desktop browsers, focusing exclusively on what they do when you launch the browser for the first time. Months later, an independent review was conducted by Douglas Leith of Trinity College Dublin. Both investigations found that Brave was, by far, the most private browser among those tested. Today, I decided to take a look at various browsers available on iOS 13, specifically Brave 1.15, DuckDuckGo 7.42.01, Mozilla Firefox 24.0, Google Chrome 80.0.3987.95, Opera Touch 2.2.1, and Microsoft Edge 45.2.16. Safari is also briefly examined, but not to the extent of the other browsers due to certain limitations. Up next, highlights from Matt Liu and Nick Polden of Origins Bat Community AMA. Welcome to the next installment in our series of Bat Community Run AMAs. The ongoing series features various guests from the Bat and Brave teams, and now guests from projects and causes that Brave collaborates with. The most recent AMA took place on April the 16th and featured guests Matt Liu, co-founder, and Nick Polden, senior engineer at Origin, a sharing economy platform that enables buyers and sellers of goods and services to transact on the distributed open web. The pair fielded both pre-submitted and live questions from Redditors about Origin Marketplace, the first marketplace built on Origin's own protocol, and DShop, Origin's decentralized e-commerce storefront, which also powers the new Brave Swag store. Matt and Nick shared why they believe the world needs blockchain-based commerce and what they see to be the advantages over traditional solutions. Up next, we have a meetup announcement. Panos Papadopoulos, security researcher at Brave, to present at upcoming Greek cryptocurrency community virtual meetup. The meetup will take place on Saturday, April the 25th, 2020 from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. GMT plus 3. We have meetup details in the weekly BAT blog post. Up next, free upcoming PrivSec webinar, the data protection crisis of online advertising with Brave's Chief Policy and Industry Relations Officer, Johnny Ryan. Here's a description of the talk. Brave has led a series of GDPR complaints in 16 EU countries against the vast data breach at the heart of the online advertising, quote-unquote, real-time bidding industry. Now, Brave has also filed a GDPR complaint against big tech internal data free-for-alls. Enforcement would be tantamount to a functional separation of the big walled gardens businesses. If you follow the link we share in the blog post, you can register with PrivSec for free and book your place at the talk. Next, upcoming guest AMA with Evelyn Wendell, founder and executive director of WeTap, a nonprofit working to improve public drinking fountain access and use. WeTap is also the recipient of a Brave ad grant. WeTap makes the public water fountain easy to find and helps add new ones to the public database. Valuing tap water, both the quality and access, is an important step to ensure our water remains safe, tasty, and protected. Evelyn Wendell will be on BAT Project on Wednesday, April 29th from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time to answer your questions about the WeTap organization and its work with Brave. This week in Sponsored Images. This week, Nexo and their campaign with Save the Children joins the list of brands running sponsored campaigns in Brave's new tab page. Images from Nexo's campaign with Save the Children were visible in the new tab page from April 21st to April 22nd. And then from the 23rd to the 26th, eToro returns to the new tab page following their recent success with their first sponsored images campaign. Back to Nexo for a second. Nexo is matching crypto donations to save the children's COVID-19 initiative. 
With hashtag save with crypto, Nexo is matching the first $10,000 donated to hashtag save with stories through the Giving Blocks widget on their website. All contributions will go toward providing children in need with food, supplies, and education during the coronavirus outbreak. And this is a bit from their website. In challenging moments, it is vital that we act together. After all, sharing the load is what the peer-to-peer model and blockchain space stand for. As an active participant in the blockchain industry, Nexo believes in sharing the responsibility for the well-being of society as, in the long run, it is for the benefit of us all, both individually and collectively. As a strong and stable company, we want to provide whatever help we can and feel a responsibility to do so. Hence, hashtag save with crypto. Nexo joins a growing list of brands that have run sponsored images in Brave that includes BlockFi, Newegg, Lokai, Crypto.com, eToro, and Western Digital. Brave Creator Spotlight, in partnership with Everipedia. Everipedia's first Brave Creator of the Week is Carl Eric Martin, aka The Moon, YouTuber. Channel Description This channel focuses on all currencies, but mainly Bitcoin. In every video, I do technical analysis suitable even for beginners. I go through daily Bitcoin news and crypto news, and I also make some general crypto market analysis. I believe that fundamental analysis and technical analysis go hand in hand, so I incorporate both in my Bitcoin videos. Cryptocurrencies, but most importantly, Bitcoin, is going to change the world, so go buy Bitcoin. Subscribe to this channel and be part of this amazing revolution. The second Brave Creator of the Week is IBX Toy Cat, Twitch streamer and YouTuber. IBX Toy Cat loves to play and discuss Minecraft. And apparently, IBX Toy Cat is not alone because their YouTube channel has over 1.44 million subscribers. Minecraft fans, don't miss out on IBX Toy Cat. For links to both featured creators' channels as well as their Everipedia entries, be sure to check out the Weekly Bat blog post. Client Updates This week, the Desktop Dev channel progressed to version 1.9.38, the Beta channel progressed to version 1.8.83, and the Desktop Release channel progressed to version 1.7.98. Brave Team Tweets Senior Developer Relations Brave Samson Tweets Brave Desktop and Android Users Navigate to About colon Components via the address bar and click Update next to the Brave Adblock Updater entry. Make sure you're on version 1.0.551 or greater. Restart Brave for good measure. That's all for now. Brave CISO Yan Zhu tweets, Now selling shirts, mugs, bags, phone cases, duvet covers, blankets, towels, buttons, bath mats featuring Rachel Fong's doodle of Azuki the Bunny. All proceeds go to save a bunny so they can rescue abandoned rabbits. News you should know. This piece is by The Register. Forget tabs. The new war is commas versus spaces. Webheads urged by browser devs to embrace modern CSS. The web is being reworked to display a rainbow of previously unavailable colors. But part of the transition demands abandoning commas for spaces when coding CSS color space parameters. Word of the new cruelty went out via Twitter on Thursday when Matthias Binans, who works on Google's Chrome team, advised web developers to adopt, quote, the modern comma-free CSS color syntax. The reason, he explained, is that modern CSS color display functions don't work with commas. These functions provide different ways to express color values. CSS, short for Cascading Style Sheets, is a domain-specific declarative programming language for laying out web pages, usually in conjunction with HTML and JavaScript. It has used commas since its first appearance in the mid-1990s and continues to do so. But CSS is evolving, and since 2016, there's been an effort spearheaded by Tab Atkins Jr., a developer on the Google Chrome team, and Alika Etmud, a member of the W3C CSS Working Group, and a Mozilla contributor to get rid of unnecessary commas in CSS code related to color. This next piece is by Forbes. Use House Party? Here's how you're being tracked on your iPhone. Video chat app House Party has been a lifeline for many people during the COVID-19 crisis. But the resulting surge in people using the app inevitably leads to questions about its security and privacy. Despite rumors of a cyber attack, House Party's security seems pretty solid. So what about the video chat app's privacy? 
A closer inspection of House Party's iPhone app shows multiple trackers and data collection that you probably didn't know about. According to a privacy review undertaken by iOS and Mac app Lockdown. You might remember Lockdown, an open source firewall app that detects who is tracking you on your iPhone and blocks them, from a previous article. The folks at Lockdown have done the privacy review of House Party as a part of a series of analyses of popular iOS apps. Roaring Fans This is a testimonial by Batty Branches on Reddit. Paying for content and feeling good about consuming. I currently have several monthly contributions set for some of my favorite content creators. It feels good to finally have a method to pay for content without going through the process of adding a standard credit card method of payment somewhere. I find that I check in on the creators I'm paying more often than I would otherwise. I also have a sense of actual choice in the content creation process. It's also really nice to see my ad earned rewards are deposited before the contributions are distributed. I can spend my full allotment of BAT and not need to worry about converting some of my other cryptocurrency into BAT to pay for the monthly contributions. Now that I've used the system for a while, it's definitely going to replace much of the current big data ad providers. I'm quite happy with the Brave Rewards ecosystem. As always, to get to the full stories whose headlines we cover in the Weekly Bat podcast, be sure to check out the accompanying Weekly Bat blog post. If you're listening on YouTube, the blog post will be linked in the description box beneath the YouTube video. And if you're listening on a podcast player or app, be sure to check the show notes. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. If you like these podcasts, be sure to follow or subscribe to stay up to date with the Bat community.